Did you know there are millions and millions of unexploded landmines and weaponry from World War II still buried in countries around the world? I didn't. Accidental discovery of them has left hundreds of thousands of people injured. And worse yet, some have even been killed. And thousands more are injured each year. Hello, I'm Justine Murphy, and this is Light Matters for April 2017. It's been more than 70 years since the Axis powers surrendered to end World War II, but the memory has been kept alive through photos and stories, and apparently even battlefield remnants. Unexploded landmines and other buried artillery are wreaking havoc on unsuspecting people around the globe. It's a growing concern, and one that researchers in Jerusalem are working to tackle. We'll have more on that story coming up soon. But first, let's take a look at some news in focus. Luminar Technologies has launched a LiDAR system designed to make autonomous vehicles safer and more scalable. Engineers have been working on development and manufacturing of the system's major components from the chip level up. The new system can detect hard to see, low reflectivity objects and offers a full seven seconds of reaction time at 75 miles per hour. James McLeod, an engineer at the University of Cambridge in the UK, has won the top prize in the National Science Photography Competition, sponsored by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council. The winning shot shows swirling graphene ink in alcohol, which can be used to print electrical circuits onto paper. The judges say this competition offers a different perspective on the technical world and demonstrates the emotional and artistic aspects of science. A team at Columbia University has developed a novel microscopy platform with enhanced detection sensitivity. It's called Electronic Pre-Resonance Stimulated Raman Scattering Microscopy, and it could potentially allow for more comprehensive system-wide labeling and imaging of more biomolecules in living cells and tissues. The Columbia researchers have also created new molecules that allow simultaneous labeling and imaging of up to 24 specific biomolecules when paired together with their microscopy technique. This is nearly five times the number of biomolecules that can be imaged simultaneously using existing microscopy techniques. The American Institute for Manufacturing Integrated Photonics, more commonly known as AIM Photonics, is working with the U.S. Department of Defense to develop sensors for integration in environmental monitoring, detection of chemical and biological weapons, disease diagnosis, and food safety. It's a hefty project that focuses on the development of manufacturing blueprints for photonics-based transducers that will identify a wide range of chemical or biological targets. Those involved with the project say that integrated photonic sensors represent a big and fast-growing market, so this work should help to further advance the technology. AIM Photonics is also gaining a partner in IBM, as the technology company joins the AIM consortium. This collaboration should provide a path for the development of new technologies and products within the integrated photonics manufacturing ecosystem. There's a new material in town, and it could drastically reduce the costs associated with cleaning chemical spills, remediating old industrial sites, and detecting things like radioactive contamination in drinking water. This new material is called PCM22, and was developed by a team at the University of Texas at Austin. It's a crystal made of lanthanide ions and triphenylphosphine. When a chemical bonds to the material and a UV light shines on it, the material emits specific colors of visible light. Each chemical produces a unique eight-factor signature of color and brightness that can be used to identify and quantify it in an uncharacterized sample. The research team envisions coating the new material onto disposable paper dipsticks, dropping them into an uncharacterized substance, and then putting it into a UV reader that will indicate what components are in the substance based on the colors of light emitted. PCM22 can already distinguish ordinary drinking water from water that's used in medical and research imaging. The researchers say this is pretty simple, too. 
potentially making it easier for government agencies to detect the presence of radioactive contamination in drinking water or other bodies of water like lakes and rivers. Millions of unexploded landmines and weaponry from World War II are still buried in countries around the world, and hundreds of thousands of people are injured from them every year. Now, efforts by a team at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem to detect and remove these explosives are making this much-needed work more sophisticated and safer. According to Aaron Agronaut, a professor at the Hebrew University who is among those leading this research, this is a fast-growing worldwide humanitarian issue. Uh, but this is a real problem, in particular in the third world. Uh, worldwide, there uh, are about 110 million mines uh, in Europe, in the old, okay? In, uh, in Europe, um, in Israel, okay, in the Golan Heights, there are uh, quite a number, uh, etc., etc. Now, problem is that in many places the war is is over, but the mines are there. People who go current mine detection methods haven't changed much since World War II, but the researchers have developed a new functional optoelectronic system that combines bacteria and laser technology to remotely detect the location of buried landmines and artillery. Specifically, bacteria is spread over a known minefield. Over time, the explosives disintegrate and molecules leak out of the landmine. These eventually rise to the surface of the ground, which then activates the bacteria. Okay, and then we can come with an optoelectronic system. And remember, the optoelectronic system, in order to activate the bacteria that responded to the presence of mine has to illuminate them with blue light. So we come with a laser beam, okay? We illuminate, we scan the area, the suspected area that was covered with the bacteria. We, we come with a, a blue a laser beam, okay? And we measure the green light that is emitted from this area. If we see that there is a significant signal of green light, we say there is a mine underneath. On the surface, if there are the bacteria, okay, it activates the bacteria, the bacteria start to work, they produce GFP molecules, and now we come with the laser beam and cause these GFP molecules to emit green light. Despite the strides made in this research, Agronaut says there's still more work to be done. And at this point, that what we did was a proof of concept. It's not the development of a mature technology. There's a long way to go. But what we showed, I think the importance of what we showed, that we can bring all the necessary elements for this to work, to operate in unison and produce a result. Once again this year, Photonics Media will be at Clio, the International Forum for Scientific and Technical Optics. And once again, we're proud to sponsor the event's tech transfer program. If you're not familiar with Tech Transfer, it's a platform for entrepreneurs to showcase their technology, learn about things like how and where to find funding options, and learn the next steps towards commercialization. The program is May 18th and moderated by Giacomo Vaca, president of Kinetic River Corporation. If you're attending Clio, this is a great program to add to your calendar. You can find more information at clioconference.org. Well, that's it for this month's show. Thanks for joining us. You can get all of the latest and coolest industry news and so much more at photonics.com. And while you're there, check out our Photonics Media Bookstore, where we're adding new resources, books, and webinars. Don't forget to follow us on social media, too. Let us know what's going on, and if there are other things you'd like to see on Light Matters, let us know that, too. We definitely want to hear from you. Until next time, keep following the photons. <laughs>